I travel west to meet Delicate Arch, driving through the fields of Iowa, the plains of Nebraska, up the front range and down the western slope into Moab. Before dawn, I head up the trail, following stone cairns to the arch. The first light of the day reaches the cliffs to the west and then the top of the arch. So many of the best things happen at dawn. A bighorn sheep comes up the trail and lies down on the slick rock nearby. There's a sound of the desert sky, no trees, no leaves, just air and ground and space. The bighorn sheep gets up to begin its day. I soon follow and head back down the trail. The mountains watch as the moon shadow approaches from the west. Two billion year old rock began rising 10 million years ago to form the Tetons, young as mountains go. In two minutes, it'll be hidden by the moon shadow, and I'll have the fortune to see it. The canyons watch as the storm passes overhead. Rock as old as two and a half billion years makes up the Grand Canyon, through which over six million years, water cut a channel a mile deep and up to 18 miles wide. In 20 minutes, it'll be hidden by the snow, and I have the fortune to watch. The physical scale of mountains and canyons is awesome, but it's the temporal scale that makes them sublime. When existence is measured in millions or billions of years, does the difference between 100 seconds or 100 years matter? Does my presence matter more to the canyon than the storm, more to the Tetons than the eclipse? The mountains watch as the moon shadow recedes to the east. Among sequoias, air is cool and damp. I take in an evergreen smell. Everything else feels small. Around saguaro, air is cool and dry. I dodge jumping choya and listen for rattlesnakes. Everything feels dangerous. Within swampland, insects hum. It's dry in Congaree today, so I won't be eaten alive. Everything feels fortunate. On infernal cones, cinders crunch beneath my feet. A solitary tree leans with a wind that I lean into. Everything feels hard. Under cherry blossoms, air smells sweet. Petals drift in the breeze. Everything feels soft. In canyon lands, slick rock is cool on an overcast day. A tree grows improbably out from under a crack. Everything feels exposed. Through the rainforest, surfaces are spongy. Trees and moss wrap around and mist greets me. Everything feels contained. Through the redwoods, I hear a lone raven's wings beat as it weaves through columns under the high canopy. Evening light filters through dusty air. Everything feels at peace. From the painted desert overlook of the petrified forest, I can see for over 100 miles the landscape of the west under a magnificent dome of sky. Plains and deserts swallowed whole in a massive sea of air. Over dunes, a cobalt sky contrasts with hills of sand. Over prairies, waves set in motion across tall grass. Over badlands, a sky alternately angry crater, then peaceful comfort. Over Devil's Tower, a monolith is made small. It must have felt endless to settlers rolling towards the horizon, reluctant to creep close. It must have felt free to indigenous people who made their home under that boundless sky. The landscape of the West, rugged, varied, and incredible. It is unified by a glorious sky, and it's in looking up that I most appreciate the grandeur before me. Drops, gently down a slope, bubbling as I walk by, barely noticeable. Before picking up steam, fingers splitting, a cascade flows. It goes through rainforests, becoming rapids. Down the Smokies, out over a grotto, falls. Between walls with force, carving rocks back upstream, the start of a 3,000 mile journey, thunders, 
into a valley, into space, slow motion tendrils drift 1,400 feet in a pattern that will never repeat. Nine seconds pass. Crash. At the edge of the continent, at the edge of the day, I cling to rocks and spin towards the sun. The tide is high and waves crash below. The first light of the day washes over me and then Bass Harbor, a golden glow contrasted against a bright pastel sky. A new day begins. Grand portal spins beneath the sun. Shadows of pictured rocks sweep across Lake Superior, and I hear thunder of waves against cliffs. The middle of the continent passes the middle of the day. I rest near a lone peregrine, perched high on warm sandstone, while the cool lake water absorbs deep blue. Waves spill over my feet as second beach spins away from the sun. The tide is coming in, so I retreat. Water spills and swirls and pushes past rocks and silhouettes of sea stacks form a barrier between the cool ocean water and the warm colors of sunset. I stand at the edge of the continent, at the edge of the day. I can't know what it would have felt like to stand at Kitty Hawk as wood and canvas was bound together and gravity first overcome. In the sunken road of Antietam, I can only feel echoes of the slaughter that took place there. But I do feel a connection when in the four dimensions of space and time, I share three-fourths of the coordinates with the people and events that led to a site's preservation. What then of monuments to the past separated by both space and time? Why does my feeling among the memorials of DC in so many ways mirror that of standing along the barbed wire fence of the Manzanar internment camp? Whether by circumstance or design, these are places that have become ideas. In experiencing these ideas, we experience a loud quiet, respectful, but screaming with the weight of knowing. These are places that create within us an empathy for a past that we can't directly experience. Three feet, just three feet from which to experience so much. Three feet by 200 feet to Old Faithful, and you can see it erupt. It's neat, you should do it. They can even tell you when it's gonna erupt next. But then, keep going. Three feet by three quarters of a mile through the giants of Sequoia will take you and bring you a sense of perfect calm. Three feet by three miles through the hoodoos of Bryce Canyon will show you a surrealist's landscape made real. Three feet by four and a half miles up to Angel's Landing can teach you, if you're brave enough, to push past fear. Or so I'm told, because I was not brave enough. Three feet by nine and a half miles over Old Rag will prove that the West does not have a monopoly on epic hikes and mountain views. Three feet by 16 miles down the Grand Canyon and back up again will teach you that if you just keep going, even when you're exhausted, you are capable of so much more than you thought was possible. Three feet by five miles towards Grinnell Glacier will take you to the perfect place to ask the best person you've ever met if she'd spend the rest of her life with you. In the expansive landscapes of our national parks, when you wanna take in so much, three feet can feel so restrictive. Oh, but those three feet, those three feet will take you to places beyond your imagination. Again, I travel west to meet Delicate Arch. Flying into Denver, then driving up the front range and down the western slope into Moab. After sunset, I head up the trail using a spotlight to find the cairns. I reach the arch, ghost-like, lit by my headlamp. Orion looks down from the western sky. After I finish my photography, I lie down in the slick rock, 
where I had seen the bighorn sheep years before. I close my eyes and look at the stars. I can't see the arch, but I'm happy just knowing it's there. I close my eyes and I listen to the sound of air and ground and space. I rise, turn on my headlamp, and head back down the trail. Thank you.